Glycolysis is the process that the cell uses to generate energy anaerobically. So it uses glucose to make a net of two molecules of ATP. Um, and the mnemonic we're going to use to memorize this is hungry pirates pick all the greatest pickled pumpkins ever picked. So each capital letter stands for an enzyme. So the first enzyme is hexokinase. The second enzyme is P, so phosphoglucose isomerase. And because there are a lot of P enzymes in here, I made sure that um, every mnemonic word corresponded with whether it's a isomerase, a kinase, or a mutase. So pirates has an I, so it's phosphoglucose isomerase. And pick has a K, so it's phosphofructose kinase. A, all, aldolase. The is triose phosphate isomerase. G for greatest is glyceraldehyde 3P dehydrogenase. Pickled, P, it has a K in there, so it's phosphoglycerate kinase. Pumpkins has an M, so it's phosphoglycerate mutase. E, enolase, and picked has another K, so that's pyruvate kinase. So let's go over these enzymes one more time. So we have hexokinase, phosphoglucose isomerase, phosphofructose kinase, one, aldolase, triose phosphate isomerase, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase, phosphoglycerate kinase, phosphoglyceromutase, enolase, and pyruvate kinase. The important enzymes to remember in here are the first one, the third one, the seventh one, and the tenth one. So the first one is hexokinase, the third one is phosphofructokinase 1, seventh one is phosphoglycerate kinase, and the tenth one is pyruvate kinase. All of these have to do with um, ATP. So the first two are converting ATP to ADP, so they're using energy. The second two are converting ADP to ATP, so they're gaining energy. The first two subtract two ATP, and the second two add four for a net of two ATP molecules gained. So once again, it's one, three, seven, and 10. These are all the important enzymes to remember. And you can remember this by the equation three plus seven equals 10, and there's a one in there. So one, three, seven, 10. Okay. Now I'm going to draw it out for you guys. So we're going to start with glucose. So glucose is a six carbon, six membered ring. Um, but one of the members of those rings is oxygen. One of those carbons is hanging out here and it has an OH attached. Then it actually has an OH attached to every other carbon, um, except for, um, the fifth carbon. And that is converted by hexokinase into glucose 6 phosphate. So that 6 carbon that's hanging out there, that has a inorganic phosphate attached to it. And then it still has all these OH groups hanging off of it too. Then you have phosphoglucose isomerase, which changes it from a glucose molecule to a fructose molecule. So instead of it being a six-membered ring, it's now a five-membered ring. Um, you still have that carbon and phosphate hanging off there, but now you have another carbon hanging off there too because you didn't remove any carbons. You just uh, changed the ring structure from six to five. And then you have phosphofructokinase one. So it's taking that phosphofructose and it's going to be adding another phosphate group onto there. So we had that original phosphate and then we're going to be adding another one. And then of course it still has all those OHs hanging off. So the enzyme aldolase splits up the molecule fructose 1,6-biphosphate into dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So the one up here is dihydroxyacetone phosphate. It's a ketone group with a phosphate group on the left and the OH group on the right. And down here we have the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. 
So it's a aldehyde group. So it's um, double bond O and an H hanging off of that carbon. And in the middle we have OH and on the left we have phosphate. And um, the ketone is converted to the aldehyde using triose phosphate isomerase. And then glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is converted to 1 3 biphosphoglycerate using the enzyme glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase. And 1 3 biphosphoglycerate looks like this it has a phosphate group on the right, an OH group in the middle, and another phosphate group on the left. Um, that is converted using the enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase into 3 phosphoglycerate. Then that is converted using the enzyme phosphoglyceromutase into 2-phosphoglycerate. So you can see um, the, uh, the phosphate group has moved from the left and it's now in the middle. So it's mutating. It, uh, nothing's really changed, it's just those groups have moved around or they switch places. And so 2-phosphoglycerate is converted using the enzyme enolase into phosphyl enol pyruvate. So it has that enol group, which is the double bonded carbon, and it has that phosphate group hanging off the bottom. Then that's converted using pyruvate kinase into pyruvate. So this is kind of a cluttered mess. So we kind of need a better way to draw out this that will be easier to remember and easier to draw. So let's try this again. Let's draw out four circles a W and an M, and then three more M's, and then two lightning bolts. This is gonna make sense pretty soon. So in the first two circles, you're gonna draw an arm, and on the second one, you're gonna draw a phosphate group because it's being charged through hexokinase. Then you've got um, two arms because it's a fructose now, and um, phosphofructokinase one charges that second arm with another phosphate. Aldolase splits it up into two, um, a ketone and an aldehyde group and um, that ketone is converted to the aldehyde using triose phosphate isomerase. So down here with the three M's and the two lightning bolts we know that they all have carbonyl groups on that rightmost carbon so let's just draw them all in and let's just draw in the enzymes too so we have G P P E P so on this first stem, we have two phosphate groups because glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase charges it with a phosphate group. Um, and then let's just fill out these enzymes. So we have PKPM and another PK over here. Um, PK removes one of the phosphate groups, and PM, if you can remember, mutates it. So the phosphate group on the left is now in the middle. Then you have enolase, which is the enol group, and the phosphate is still there. And then you have PK, which removes that last phosphate group. Okay, now for good measure, let's try it all once more. So first you have glucose, and that's converted by hexokinase to add a phosphate group there. That's converted by phosphoglucose isomerase to make it fructose. That's converted by phosphofructokinase 1 to add another phosphate group on there. That's split by aldolase to make a W and an M. One's a ketone, one's an aldehyde. Um, and they have the phosphate groups on there. And then you have triose phosphate isomerase to convert one to the other. Then you have three M's down here and two lightning bolts. Um, they're all carbonyl groups, so let's just draw those in. And let's draw on the enzymes too. And the, the one on the left has two phosphate groups. Then going forward, there's only one. It's mutated, and then it's an enol group, and then it's pyruvate. Okay, so just make sure you can draw this and remember that um, the key reactions are 1, 3, 7, and 10. So the first two, you use an ATP, and in the second two, you gain two. So you have a net of plus two ATP.